Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My friends finally were able to recognize me. Even uh, Random Gaming in HD started off revealing his grandma's PC. The greatest technician that's ever lived. With regards to uh, gaming, low budget, retro oriented machines, so on and so forth. I said to myself, why not? I have decided to start a little segment called Tech Revive and I will be focusing on potentially bringing computers back to life. Hopefully it wouldn't be anything too crazy, but uh, if it comes to it, then it is what it is. As a, uh, as a first stop into anything, uh, I guess it would be uh, fitting to the case that I re revive uh, my old gaming computer. Uh, what you guys see on the table is an old Lenovo Think Server motherboard pulled from a workstation so many years ago and um, when I built this it started off as my first quote-unquote gaming rig until it got shelved for a newer one uh, but the specs on this are pretty uh, pretty bog standard I had an old i5-4570 GT uh, sorry uh, NVIDIA 8000 GT and when the build started, it had 8 gigs of RAM, 2 sticks of 4, and eventually it evolved to 4 sticks of 4, totaling 16 gigs of RAM. When, it sh when I got shelved, I, uh, after all these years, I don't really know if it works anymore. So I took it apart, I cleaned up all the parts, and we're going we're gonna, to, in the, in the spirit of starting a new uh, type of series, we're going to put it back together. For the specs, as I've already mentioned, the uh, graphics card, the CPU, and the motherboard, uh, I am also using 16 gigs of RAM of DDR3 1600, 8 gigs of SK Hynix, and 8 gigs of Crucial Memory. And for cooling, I am using a very generic Gamax 400T from Deepcool. Um, as a tower CPU cooler. Let's put it back together and see if it still works after all these years. We're gonna start off by the uh, most simple, I suppose, element because the CPU is already in there, it's already pasted, and realistically speaking, next step should be RAM. So let's open all the four memory slots and then insert the RAM. And because I'm a little bit crazy, blue is going to go into blue and green is going to go into green. That, to me, has always been uh, satisfactory. Color matching the, uh, the RAM sticks with the RAM banks. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, CPU cooler. Over the years, the um, little plastic hooks that would hold the... Um, the CPU cooler bracket onto the motherboard have kind of brittled away. So I had to improvise a little bit and replace the plastic uh, hooks with um, just regular screws from the hardware store. And the way I'm holding them is as you can see, there's uh, plastic grommets isolating the metal from the motherboard PCB. There is no damage, everything works fine. It's just a little one orthodox simply because of the age of the uh, the hardware. I mean, we are talking close to more than a decade old. So let's install the CPU cooler and then we're going to go to uh, the next stuff. Uh, what I like to do is I like to uh, cable manage and uh, put the cable through uh, kind of openings that I have so that it can be tucked away. And we're going to go ahead and just, and voila, as soon as it clicks in, we know that it's nice and firm. It's not going anywhere. This is the graphics card that has gotten me through uh, old school gaming for the most part. So as an honorary build, it's going to go right back into it. You're probably, by this point in time, you're probably asking, well, why did you get a motherboard from Lenovo? Aren't those one of the most proprietary motherboards out there? The answer is simple. Price, really. Uh, it wasn't really anything outside of that. 
it is true that the front USB pan, uh, header and the power header and the power supply and the USB 3.0 are non-standard. However, uh, for $13 off of AliExpress, you can buy little adapters and make it just a bog standard uh, ATX format. So this is the Lenovo 2 uh, ATX USB 3. All you got to do is you just plug it in and boom, you now have USB 3 functionality. This is the USB header to convert from a Lenovo standard to a USB standard. All you have to do is just plug it in and boom, you now have an ATX USB standard or sorry, a PC USB standard. And then last but not least, this is the front panel mapping, which uh, gives you those little pinouts for for the, the front panel. And pretty much it, you plug it in. And now you have front panel connectivity as well. And next on the list is D24 pin, or sorry, Lenovo's 14 pin to 24 pin. This is probably the most expensive part of the conversion kit. It is just a 14 pin to a 24 pin bridge with um, the uh, bridging of, the, sorry, not the bridging, but the connecting of the different necessary wires. Uh, it cost me a grand total of $6, but you just plug it in and that's all that you need to do. And last but not least, CPU 4 pin. CPU 4 pin is a standard ATX connector. And we are ready for post. One, two, three. Will it work after all these years? Come on, I believe in you. I believe in you. Oh, right. It won't work unle until I connect the cable. The greatest technician that's ever lived. Let's reboot. Will you work? And we have post. So as soon as it's done posting, and voila, we have post. So now, the next challenge, I suppose, of putting my build back together is to put it in the case. My case of choice, as it was back in the day, it is right now, is the trusty old ugly, god ugly. Inspiron 531, which is currently in pieces. But the reason why I went on with that one is because our first family computer was an Inspiron 531. We're talking about the really, really, really old Inspirons, uh, which had a uh, Pentium 4 case, or sorry, CPU. So it's a pretty, pretty, very pretty old tower, but uh, this is just an homage to uh, the original build from back in the day. So it's a pretty standard way of building it. Motherboard goes inside, just like so. You align it with the uh, holes that are already on the uh, on the case itself for the grommet. And if I find my bit, that would be great. Hate me all you want, but uh, I really like the T15 screws from HP. They are, I have not yet had one of them cause me grief outside of when I don't have the proper bit. But um, these things are really robust and they have never let me down. So as soon as we are done with the eight screws, we are going to be continuing on to the next step of the of the uh, of the build.
for storage, I have opted out. I have opted in, sorry, for a conservative little 128 gig SSD from Samsung. And for those who own a case similar to this, are probably gonna say, "Well, where are you gonna, where are you gonna put it?" Because those cases didn't really have uh, any place for an SSD. Well, you're both right and you're wrong. Because this case is so old and I really insist on paying homage to it, I had to improvise until I found a solution. And that's in the hard drive slays, which are designated for the regular hard drives. And I know what you're going to say. Those are not really the holes, but I just need it to work. I don't need it to look pretty. At the end of the day, this is going to be a closed build. So we'll go ahead and screw that in. Go ahead and screw that in as well. And voila, we have a pretty solid, stable connection into our build. And we are going to, oh, no, we're not because this cable is not long enough. We are going to connect it with one of our secure SATA connectors. And voila, goes connected into SATA zero. And we are connected with our SSD. Next stop is uh, another piece that's going to be bringing homage to the uh, to the good old build. It's going to be some ketchup and mustard cables. Uh, I know what you're going to say. Ketchup and mustard doesn't really have place in the, into a recent build, but uh, we are paying homage to a, we're paying respect to an old build, so the ketchup and mustard have to stay. One of the next questions that I'm probably fairly sure that you're going to have is, well, how are you going to stick the power supply in there? And I've had a lot of time to think about that in particular. And uh, the truth is, I'm going to be using the uh, built-in um, little cable. Cable, uh, sorry, not shrouds, but um, guides. So... I am using a regular standard ATX Earthwatts 380. And uh, the reason why I'm using it is because it is, for the use case scenario, it gets the job done. So we're gonna actually, we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna do it this way. We're going to make sure that it clicks in and when it does we are ready to do our cabling so with regards to the cabling there is a lot of it especially it being a non-modular power supply but as i said it is not the end of the world the two most important cables um, as long as they are oriented and taking care of everything else will kind of fall into place for the moment we're gonna push the uh, auxiliary cables away and we're gonna connect our CPU first and voila. Here we go, CPU is connected. And for the 24 pin, I like to stow it away into the, uh, the little media bay where the um, USB uh, hub used to be. Not anymore, but it used to be there. We don't really need the power, the six pin power, so um, I will grab a zip tie just a little later and zip it together with the rest of it. And uh, the last thing that we do need, however, is um, our Molex. And we're just going to go ahead and... Are we going to... 
going to get it in. Please don't answer that question. What is taking me so long? Let's do it the easier way. And it's in, finally. So, because we're going to eventually put in a, a data drive. No, it's not in. And last but not least, connect your SATA power cable. Man, this is, this is wholly falling apart. Okay, finally, we are in. Because we don't really need any additional peripherals, we can just tuck this into the uh, 3.5 media bay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the power switch and the LED. Gonna make sure that it uh, gets inside nice and proper, and uh, make sure that the LED is nice and clicks in. And last but not least, we're gonna orient the uh, front panel connector and just push it in and with that the uh, build is complete and all we need to do is just put the pie the panels on starting with the top it is slowly starting to take shape starting with the rear if I remember correctly it should be this one Perfect. And on the rear of the computer, we still have not secured our power supply, but that is coming right now. We're going to grab four screws and line it up. One. Oh, that is so bad. The greatest technician that's ever lived. Okay, crisis averted. So now we are actually going to screw in our power supply. Two. Three and four. Right. This guy. I'm just going to tighten them up. Next step of the puzzle is a nice little fan in the back. This is quite dirty because that's the original thing. Probably it's going to have to get cleaned up right after the fact. And uh, for now, what we're just going to do is we're going to put it in as, as a reference to it. Come on, catch on there, and then we'll deal with the rest.
and voila this should be screwed in nice and proper now if i could only all we have to do now is just connect our fan into the little pin hitter that should be it the last thing really is just making sure that the wires are properly organized so that nothing gets in the way of anything else we're gonna tuck them away in the uh, five and a quarter bay with the exception of you you need to stay down here And uh, before we close it up, to make sure that there is no uh, negative feelings, we are going to make it post one more time. And it still works. Good. We are going to install the operating system afterwards. And that's it. This is my old gaming computer being rebuilt. Thank you for coming on this journey.